Hello and welcome to Superintendent's Roundtable. I'm Deborah Vinsel from Thurston Community Television. Periodically we meet with the superintendents from the four large school districts in the area to talk about issues uh, relative to education in our community and I'm pleased to have them with me again today. So t by way of introduction we'll go around the table. We have Mike Kirby from the Tumwater Schools, Raj Manhas from North Thurston Public Schools, Dick Sivatonich from Olympia School District, and Andy Wolf from Yelm Community Schools. So thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us again here at the round table. Uh, the last time we met was in early June, and the legislature was still in session, its second or third special session. So <coughs> we've just gotten through the start of the new school year, and I want to go around the table and find out what's new, what's going on, exciting things for the future in your districts, and we'll start with you, Mike. Well, we have a, a number of new administrators in our um, school district. Um, uh, Jeff Broom is our new principal at Tumwater High School, replacing Scott Seaman, who was very popular and had been there for 11 years as principal, I believe. Uh, Sue Anderson is a new assistant at Black Hills High School. Two of our elementaries have grown to the point where we're uh, converting our deans to assistant principals and, uh, at Michael T. Simmons and at um, uh, Peter G. Schmidt Elementary. And we have two supervisors um, in, the, uh, in the district office. Um, as well, we have uh, Bob Keel, after 33 years in the school district, moved to Bellingham this year. Wow. And we replaced him with uh, Beth Schooler. And Alan Jones, after 11 years in the school district as our business manager, um, retired. And we replaced him with uh, Donna Mori. So probably more changes administratively in Tumwater this year than typically happens in any five or six years. Mm -hmm. So, oh, um, and um, are we going to, uh, we'll talk about the staff well, yeah, teachers later. We, well, you can bring that up now if you want. You've okay. got new teachers okay. in your schools. Well, we had uh, <clears throat> a, a little over 80 uh, positions open teacher-wise in the district this year. Um, 48 of those were filled from people that are new to the district. So um, much larger number than we've had in the last few years. And um, overall, we have 14 uh, additional FTE teacher-wise this year um, compared to past years, mm -hmm. primarily because of, of uh, enrollment growth and additional uh, learning assistant dollars to support students' in interventions. Um, so our, our focus has really been to um, address the class size in early elementary and, and get in line with that and provide greater support for our, for our kids. So your teaching staff increased this year? Yes, it did. No, no reduction in force. That's a good thing. <laughs> Raj, how about North Thurston? Well, first of all, we have, uh, uh, we have been growing quite a bit, and we've grown again 277 students. So it's like 400-some students since I joined, wow. more. So that is one of our major um, uh, issues we got to deal with, space and other things. Um, and we had some major changes in our administration too. We always have some, you know, it's a larger system. Somebody moves on or retires, and so we have four new principals in different assignments. We have a new transportation director. Uh, we have a new assessment director. Our previous assessment director retired. Um, we, um, as far as our um, overall staffing is concerned, we have grown, um, you know, of course, there are some people retiring and replacements, but 40 some more staff wow. uh, this, this, this year, uh, mostly teachers, but other classified staff and sports staff uh, to support our more students, of course, but on also the class size, you know, which we have, of course, brought it back to where we were maybe three years ago and, or so. And what is your average class size now? Average is, is, let's see, I have the numbers here, about 20, I think we try to maintain average K, K6, about 25 overall. Good and size. then I think around in, in the middle and high, around 30 some mm -hmm. average. So we work with our associations. Um, and, and in some cases it might be small and right. in other cases more, mm -hmm. but wherever we can, um, work with their staff. You know, when there are only one or two students more, then we work out some, some right. something working with the teachers. But So in, in general, it's, it's a growing district, and um, we, we added more staff, and space is a big issue for us. So we'll continue to work on those issues. Great. I'll get with you in just a second. Mike, I do want to come back to you relative to class size with uh, your addition in uh, additional teaching staff. 
how has that affected the class size in Tumwater? Um, our, our focus has been primarily at the elementary level, and our class size at the elementary is less than 25 mm -hmm. now. Um, the, the goal in 2018 will be that we'll have uh, one for 17 wow. in, in K3. I mean, that's the, that's the state's McCleary case. Mm -hmm. We're not there. We're, we're more at uh, probably K3 at one, uh, one teacher per about 21 or 22 students right now. So, okay. Good, good. Dick, new well, exciting things in Olympia. Lots of excitement. Uh, we have a, a hundred more students this September than we had last September, and uh, that continues a trend of, of growth after some declining enrollment. Last year we grew around 40 students. So. We're excited to uh, see that continue to increase. I think it primarily is on the west side here where there's a lot of construction in Olympia. In terms of uh, new staffing and administrative changes, I have to smile. This is probably a little known uh, fact, but uh, all of us have very strong teaching staff. And uh, I'm, I'm laughing a bit because Mike referenced a, a new principal that uh, uh, he has at one of his schools, and he came from our district. Hmm. We hired an assistant principal from the Elm School District, and uh, a little movement yeah, in the and, area. And, and I think that's really healthy uh, because these are really quality people in all of our school districts, and uh, we tease each other about that. Um, so we have a new assistant principal at, at Capitol, uh, Jen Hewitt, who came from Yelm. We welcome three new elementary principals, Joel Lang, who was formerly. <laughs> in the North Thurston School District, and uh, Sean Shaughnessy is a new principal from Olympia and Roosevelt Elementary, and uh, Domenico Spatola Knoll, who had been at Madison, is, a, uh, is now at Madison, who had been at Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, not a lot of changes, but uh, we're really pleased with the people that we have. Okay. Class size, uh, <coughs> we've always tried to keep those class sizes uh, around 24 at the elementary. Um, and our secondary schools have, uh, during the budget cuts, uh, have, have seen class sizes increase. We tried to focus some dollars at our secondary, our middle school, and high school class sizes to create some smaller class sizes at, at secondary this year. Good. And Andy, how about Yelm? Yeah, we are off to a great start. A uh, very positive year, and just some of the things that I'm most proud of as we come in is we had a, a really large contingency of teachers come in over the summer and prepare for Common Core and do some things and just really get up the district up to, and running in that area. Um, we did grow again this year. Um, so we continue to grow. We've, we're kind of flat for a year or two there. but So we're at about 5,500 students, which is the largest Elm's ever been, and we continue to see that, which creates some facility needs for us as far as uh, you know trying to make sure class size. So. Um, we, I think, had about 45 new staff members, all teachers this year, and not necessarily due to the growth, and we had some of that, but a lot of, just a lot of retirement. We had a lot of folks that was at the end of their career, and they left, and so we replaced that. Very excited. No administrative changes, which is very nice. I think it's a consistency, because we've kind of been in that little bit of a roller coaster there. We did lose some good people to some surrounding districts, though, so that was, uh, that's always unfortunate, but it's also, like Dick said, very healthy for all of us. So, no, I think things are going well. And we're excited. And your class sizes are? Um, we tend to operate about uh, one, it, on a district average, about one below the state, whatever the state funding level is. So if it's 25.3, if her class size will be at 24.3. We just And we just okay. use those grade level bands and try to stay there at this point in time and try to that preparation. We, we do fund a little more rich. Um, we, we have counselors in all our elementary schools, which is not necessarily funded mm -hmm. by the state and things like that. So uh, our class size is really good. I will say the one area this year that I know of is the high school. We were at about, we hit about 30 in mm -hmm. our, um, in a lot of our sophomore classes. We had a, uh, that was where some of our growth, unexpected growth came. And so biology and uh, some of our world, those history classes were, but we've made some adjustments. And so we're, we feel like we're doing really well. Great, great. Well, it sounds like the school year's off to a really good start. Um, so let's, let's talk about, um, uh, test scores from last year. The uh, Olympian had a great article about um, the test scores overall in Thurston County. And when I read it, I was really excited to see how well all of the schools in Thurston County did. So I want to start with you, Dick. Um, you know, comparing to previous years or looking at the scores that you saw for your district, you know, what were your observations or thoughts or, you know, challenges maybe facing you? Uh, 
We're very pleased uh, in a number of areas. Uh, first, I'd like to highlight the end of course assessment for our, our students in high school. Uh, boy, it, they're the best they've ever been in some cases, in some areas. Uh, the EOC in reading, 94% of our, our students met that standard in reading and in writing. Math was up to 86.2. Um, and we're just really proud of that. We think those are some of the top scores in the state. Uh, I really like to look at data, and I, I, I spend uh, probably too much time looking at data on the weekends. But, of, uh, And so I have a tendency to break it down into cells. So K-8, we saw some gains as well. And there are about 16 cells if you look at third grade reading as a cell and third grade math as a cell. And we are up in nine of 16 cells, which we're proud of. Uh, we had a couple cells where we were just about the same. And then we were down in four cells. Uh, and there was no particular pattern or, across the district. Uh, it could be math or reading, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we were pleased with the student performance. Um, one area that we're particularly proud of that we've had an added emphasis is uh, closing the achievement gap between low-income students and students who come to school with more resources. And uh, I think there was an added focus on that. We're seeing that diminish. We know that students, if given the right type of support and services, they can perform equally well. Garfield Elementary, our school with the highest free and reduced lunch rate, right around 63% had some of the highest performance of any of our elementary schools, and we're really proud of that. An area for growth, uh, and we did manage to close the gap uh, a bit more, was uh, the performance of special education students, but there's still a, a considerable gap, and our board uh, has been very direct with me, and uh, they said, we want to see that gap close, mm -hmm. and so uh, that'll be a big focus for us this year. Good. Raj? Well, we had, uh, um, as you said, all of us did well. But in our school system, given our poverty rate, free and reduced lunch has gone up by 5% in the last four years. I've been here um, up to almost 42, 42 plus. But in some schools, it's beyond 70. So mm -hmm. we have done really well. Math and science have been a major focus for middle and high. And we've made major strides um, upward. Mm -hmm. And it's all over the school system. And as, as Dick was talking about looking at 21 some cells, there was only one cell we didn't grow. Um, we made progress in every area, reading, writing, mathematics, and science. The things I'm really, as, as Dick was mentioning a little bit, it's really proud of the thing is when we, one of our elementary schools, Lacey, it's almost 60% poverty, 58 something, mm -hmm. 59. Their performance is one of the highest. Mm -hmm. And that means we are really eliminating the disproportionality based on poverty and race. But we need to replicate some of those strategies everywhere. Yeah, and, and, and then we look at high-end kids. You know, <coughs> last year we had, I think, two national merit finalists. We had three again this year. So it's, it's really nice that not only kids who are really struggling at the bottom, but we are really working at all levels. Mm -hmm. Algebra, which, as, as I said before, we had 19% growth, uh, Algebra 1, uh, from as compared to last year. So, so it doesn't happen without some amazing work by teachers and sports staff. And so we have been doing a lot of tutoring, summer school, reaching out to every child. So, so, so this is the part which is really inspiring is that the people, the staff, teachers, the sports staff, principals, everyone is embracing. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a moral imperative. And it's also part of our, our job that we need to continually help every child. So our focus on every child is really paying off. And lastly, I want to say, which is also a matter of great um, satisfaction for me personally and our board and the community, that with, given our demographics and the mobility we have for military families uh, and everyone else, uh, our on-time on graduation is 85%. And which is, which is, you know, four years ago, we were kind of at the state level. Now we are distance ourselves about 7%. So this is a yeah, great accomplishment and what, for our And district. what is the state average State is around 77, mm -hmm. if I'm not right, 77. So it's nice to have that comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's because we are sort of similar, 
state average is similar on, on free and reduced mm -hmm. lunch, sort of we, we compare maybe a little bit different, but, but very similar. That's your graduation rate much higher. Yeah, much higher. And, 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 and that takes, you know, I mean, when you really look at 7 8% difference and 1,000 kids graduating from our school mm -hmm. system every year, that's about 80 some kids yeah. not being Who delayed or on the streets yeah. later on. Yeah. So, so I, I feel very good about Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Mike. Um, as, as Dick had mentioned, he talked about the, the K-8, there's 16 different assessments altogether. And then if you add the high school in, there's 20, there's six more. So mm -hmm. of the 22 assessments that we get from the state overall, um, we were up in, in six cells and we were uh, down in five and we were pretty much level mm -hmm. in um, 11, yeah, 11 of them. So um, we have, uh, um, and then compared uh, to the state, we're above the state in 21 of 22 areas. Um, Fabulous. We, we do have one elementary class that's going through that uh, um, we have a lot of work to do on, and, and that's in, in all three areas of reading, writing, and, and mathematics. Um, a couple of um, uh, things that, that uh, we're all concerned about mathematics, and our sixth, seventh, and eighth grades combined showed marked improvement. Um, I think our sixth grade went up in double figures in terms of the number of students meeting the standard. And um, our seventh and eighth was eight and nine percent. So we're making progress, but we still have a lot of work to do in, in the mathematics. And then just uh, Black Lake Elementary, their sixth grade, 100 percent of the students met standard in reading. And uh, that's pretty cool that's for fabulous. those teachers. Uh, Congratulations. That that yeah. That's great. Yeah, Andy. It's kind of the same, same but song. But they said. Yeah, <laughs> since we are. We are really fortunate. Yeah, we've had really strong performance the last few years and this year we continue to grow. I think areas that I was most excited about was our middle level and of course exams. I think we were at 98 to 100 percent from the algebra and the geometry and those mm -hmm. kids that are taking that at the junior high level which is pretty phenomenal when they're doing that at 7th, 8th, and ninth grade level. It's, it's, it's a big deal. Um, so we saw some real growth there and just some phenomenal work. Uh, most, I think if I was going to single out schools in Yelm, Yelm High School, uh, basically Fort Stevens Elementary and Mill Pond really set some really high standards for the rest of the district as they go. Yelm High School continues to just take off the last three or four years. Their score and the work there of the teachers have been phenomenal and what the students, and it's being replicated by what the students are doing, you know. So very excited about that. Um, Raj talked a little bit about, you know, uh, poverty schools achieving. Fort Stevens is ours, most impacted mm -hmm. in building. And, they are actually setting the bar out in our district at this point in time, and they went three years ago. Uh, we went to progress monitoring and three, you know, weekly assessments. Pro teachers doing that and progress monitoring all the way across the board, and now the rest of the district is in that mode at this point in time. And we feel very strongly that that's going to make a huge difference in where we go at this point in time. And their staff, if you tried to take it away from those teachers, <coughs> uh, they would fight you tooth and nail with that ability to do that. So. Really excited about where, we, where we're headed and uh, what's happening. It's just great, some great stuff. Math was the one area that everybody um, is still, um, it's, it's still a challenge, I know. Everybody made a lot of progress in it, but it's still the, the one area where people are really focused. So what kinds of things are going on in your districts to help you know, support and bring up um, those math scores? I'm going to start with you, Andy, on that. Sure, yeah. I, I think that this is a, one of the things that we all struggle and look with, but I think that, honestly, we've put in a number of interventions at this point in time. First of all, let me step back. We've kind of, there's state standards and there's Common Core, which I know we'll talk about. We've really abandoned the state standards this year because Common Core comes on to next year. And so we've really jumped into the Common Core to K-12, especially algebra, K-2, we're fully involved, or mm -hmm. six, seven, eight. So we are actually doing Common Core math across the district. Yeah, and let's, let's for our viewers say, Common Core are the national standards for? Correct. Well, uh, yeah, reading and basically literacy and mathematics okay. is really where you want to go. And they're much deeper and the, and the rigor is, uh, uh, it's intensified, let's just put it that way. So we, we've really jumped into that this year, just kind of going down that route and, and looking at that. But with that then, we've also taken some of our, um, the learning assistance funds that have come down. And next year, there's a, they're kind of hand tied to before K4 literacy first, but this year there was some freedom. So we put some programs in place, uh, 456, we've added an additional um, lap teacher at every building just to, to, uh, with math. Uh, we do after-school intervention programs at all our elementary schools right now, uh, probably hitting about 30 kids, uh, you know, nightly that we're trying to build those math things. We do a Saturday school at the high school at that point in time. So those are some of the intervention pieces that we're involved in. The other thing that we've done is that Kimberly Sullivan, one of our instructional specialists out there, 
Uh, she wrote a grant again to the DODIA, Department of Defense, and uh, so $675,000 we just received over three years to really work on Common Core or middle and high school level of, of integrating the technology that's used because there's a lot of graph and calculators and things like that. So that's another big plus for us. So we feel like we made a really strong push. We saw some gains uh, last year, and so we think we're on the right track and right. are going to continue to work there. Great. Dick, what's going on in Olympia with math? A uh, number of things. Uh, <clears throat> We, we have good math performance, I think, across our district, but we have pockets of uh, schools where their performance is not as strong as we would like. Uh, and so we've approached it in a variety of ways. Uh, first, all of our K-5 teachers have taken part in a three-day training in the Common Core State Standards in Math, which Andy alluded to, and uh, I think it, 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 it sets the stage for student performance if our teachers have a better understanding of what those standards are. We have uh, math coaches to support uh, the secondary schools. Uh, for teachers who might need some assistance in, in their work and how to best uh, uh, instructional strategies, whether it's technology, as Andy alluded to, or a flipped classroom. We're experimenting with some flipped classrooms mm -hmm. uh, where students uh, actually see the lectures at home and the teacher works with them at the high school yeah. uh, during the day, so it's not a, a, a traditional mm -hmm. setting in that sense. And in uh, a number of our schools, uh, you know, the common term is double dip. I don't know if I like that, but students get extra time. One of the biggest variables in uh, student math performance is the time on task. And we have this expectation that all students are going to arrive at the same place at the same time. And I think we're smarter about how we instruct math now, and we realize that uh, that's not the case. So in a couple of our schools at elementary, we've convened as groups and we've dedicated more time, both during the course of the day and after school or before school for tutoring or actually a second period of math during the course of the day. We saw very good success uh, with our high school students uh, and middle school students with programs called Keys and Chems. And algebra is a real gatekeeper for students uh, for all kinds of things. You can trace it back to college entry, to uh, successful careers beyond high school. And we want to make sure that our students really understand that. And these programs essentially pre-teach what's going to happen in the regular class. And sure, students are getting a little bit more time. I've sat in on those classes with students and asked them, well, how do you feel about this? You're, you're, you're taking something very similar to what you're going to get in another period. And 201 have said, this has been great. I'm way more confident when I get there. I feel like I can answer the questions, and I don't shut down when I get to class. And I think that's a big part of the success. The last uh, piece uh, that we're working on is we have a community and staff-based and, and university-based committee that's looking at a new math curriculum. The math curriculum in the Olympia School District is 13 years old, mm -hmm. and um, there's been a lot of choice in the past. We know that a new curriculum isn't going to match perfectly with the Common Core State Standards. But uh, we feel like it's very important to have something to put in the hand of all of our elementary math teachers that everyone uses, everyone uses common assessments, and we'll fill in the pieces mm -hmm. uh, as we learn more about the Common Core as we move mm -hmm. forward. And so we're excited that next year we'll have a new math curriculum. Great. So for us, um, we have been not only in mathematics, I just want to start with that we, we have aligned the whole system, their district goals, school goals, classroom goals, in every subject. And, and then in, while we do that, we look at the data for every child, uh, where they were last year, and now they're moving fifth grade, for example, to sixth grade, and really working with teachers and say, how can we support these kids? So this is something which I've talked before in these programs, that uh, we have a support system which has two parts to it. There is a behavior side, which is the social, emotional, and, and all of those things, positive behavior system, PBIS, and then also the RTI, which is the response to intervention, basically, on the academic sport. Now, the part which is really inspiring to me is this is every staff member in our school system is responsible for doing this. It's a system-wide thing. It's not in one classroom. It's not in one school. And in reality, that has made a huge difference that every time they look at every child, 
they look at the both sides. Mm. What are the kind of with difficulties, either military kids or other kids they are going through? How can we support them better? So student engagement, looking at the data, and then providing the appropriate support. Now, Dick mentioned some of those strategies. We are doing a lot of tutoring, a lot of after school, during school, peer tutoring, and summer program. We made it much more robust even this past mm. summer. Now, those kids who struggle you know, last year and they know they're going to get into this algebra or, or whatever other courses, they, 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 they are much more confident going into, the, into that um, classroom. And uh, in reality, it's, it's more of a system approach. And, and then as far as the, the and, and where everyone is involved, and there is everyone else paying attention to every child. And, and so, for example, high school uh, staff is looking at in advance where the middle schools are. Well, there's kids mm -hmm. coming into this. So this alignment, uh, the whole elementary, middle, high is very strong, and it is becoming stronger every year. Now, the part which is really, really wonderful for me to say is when I ask the same question from our principals, especially at high school, because our high schools have done amazingly well, and as I said, in the last two, three years, in improving everything, graduation rates and performance in reading, writing, and mathematics. How do you do it? It's everything. It's not one mm -hmm. thing. It's all of these things doing well. And this positive behavior, when high school principal, one of the high school principal just a couple of days ago told me their behavior issues have gone down by 40% in wow. two years. So just imagine how much time those kids are spending you know, right. in, in the classroom. And the principal is spending the time on the right mm -hmm. things. I think this is, this is the sort of part which is when you do stuff like that and everyone is involved. And, and one of the last things I want to say is now this year, we have a new assessment director who's doing an amazing job in looking at every child. We are providing this data to everyone, the teachers, the principals, and us, you know, looking at it it's every day, and say, okay, if this child met standard in mathematics in fifth grade and coming to you in a sixth grade, maintain that and add more. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the sort of really keeping us honest at all levels is part of our work, and, and, and I believe it's paying off. And we had 10% growth in seventh grade math great. This, this, this year, just using some of those strategies, so. Great. Mike. Well, um, we've, we've had a, in Tumwater a really well-developed response to intervention process for, for reading for some time, and, and it's really reflected in our reading uh, results over that time. And that includes benchmarking assessments and finding effective interventions and measuring those interventions uh, with kids. and identifying their learning gaps uh, quickly and addressing them. And uh, it's been a very effective approach. We need to translate that now to mathematics, and, and we're working on it. Um, the, one of the things that's happening is that our plan is to move sixth grade to middle school uh, with uh, hopefully with a passage of a bond, and we uh, would uh, build a sixth grade wing at each one of our middle schools because we feel like the sixth grade is a better fit at middle but one of the things that's happened in our transition is, is that their sixth grade have become more content specialists, even though they're housed at the elementary. So one teacher primarily is the math teacher now, one teacher the, the language arts teacher, and so on. And because of that, we've seen a uh, really considerable increase in our math scores at sixth grade. Um, one of the things that we are really focusing on is math at sixth, seventh, and eighth. And a piece of data that's really relevant for us is that 92% of the students um, that meet the standard at seventh grade in math pass the EOC. Just over 50% of those that don't meet the standard in seventh grade pass the, the mm -hmm. EOC, which tells us that, that we really need to have our kids uh, meeting standard by seventh grade to effectively give them a great opportunity to, to meet the EOC. And our EOCs have been, have been mm -hmm. high. So that's an important piece of data that we're using kind of drive our work. The other piece that we're really focused on this summer is we gave our, our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers extensive training in aligning our curriculum to the Common Core in mathematics. And the Common Core is going to do a better job probably than our own state standards have in the past in terms of, of uh, scope and sequence and moving the content from one grade to the next and also in the assessments. So we expect that, that that's going to help us quite a bit as well. So alignment with the Common Core, extra professional development, and, and a focus on our instructional strategies. Great. So. Well, congratulations. Because um, it's exciting to see how well our schools are doing 
uh, compared to previous years and yes. compared to other schools in the state. So we all have a lot to be proud on. Let's move forward a little bit our perennial budget discussion. Like I said earlier, the legislature was still trying to figure things out when we last met. Um, they finished their session. They approved the budget. It moved forward. How did it impact your schools? Dick, I'm going to start with you. Well, uh, again, if, if, if and you are sitting down and talking with the four of us, we'd always say that uh, our, our schools are not funded at the total uh, that we think they should be. Uh, we appreciated the changes this year and we look forward to more in the future, but for us it's allowed us to do some things that haven't been in place for a while and I, I, there's a list. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we're all able to offer more interventions to students, K-3 in particular. We've uh, really focused uh, on our title schools and our non-title okay. schools that still have significant populations of free and reduced lunch who don't qualify. What, what was the dollar figure? I, I, that's the other thing. I should have brought that in, but based on, I know you had budgets prepared, you had to have your budgets prepared, Correct. and then the budget was passed. So was there a dollar impact up or down as a result of that? Well, there, there was. If, if you looked at the dollar total, it would be ar around $2 million, but there are a lot of uh, pieces the plus, that, right, the plus that weren't side, funded yeah. that we had to fund out of that. Right. We drove as many of the resources back out into the schools as we could, mm -hmm. and uh, we focused on intervention assistance. We focused mm -hmm. on mental health counseling. Uh, is a huge issue in schools and I think it's a huge issue in our society and we see students who don't have support services outside of school so we felt like we needed to do some work in that area uh, adding to our, our counselor ranks adding another mental health person to our district to work with students and families um, we've expanded uh, free full day kindergarten we have 15 full day kindergartens, probably I think seven of those are free and the others are uh, uh, students who come from families uh, who are accessing their free and reduced lunches also have uh, their tuition waived. In fact, uh, the only school that doesn't have a, a full day kindergarten is Boston Harbor now. Mm -hmm. um, we've restored a day and a half to the school calendar. Uh, Last year, our students were only in school 177 days. We've added another day and a half back into the school calendar. Again, going back to what I'd said earlier, that we think really time on task is a variable we can control. Yep. And even if it's a day and a half, it's a day and That's a half. It's a day half. and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, uh, we're able to restore some salary reductions. Um, and finally, I think the TPEP, which we've talked about in, in, mm -hmm. in the past, the new evaluation system, we're able to offer support to teachers and principals as we implement that. We've done some other simple things uh, that are not very glamorous. Uh, we've added a, a position just in our grounds. Uh, our board has made the right decision, I believe, to drive dollars back into the classroom, but that's been at the expense of some of uh, our grounds work, and so we've, we've done some things in, in a lot of different areas. Raj. Well, we, we had, um, as you ask about the amount, it's about six million plus for us more. But when you really look at it um, with the uh, number one um, class, class size and new staff needed to sport and, 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 and all the other things which we have not been doing for some time, and we added again, um, as, as we were discussing earlier, to um, uh, our elementary schools where we, we had full day kindergarten available in all schools, but it wasn't free. In some cases, you know, it, the people were paying this amount and then we could subsidize and provide some, mm -hmm. some uh, scholarships or whatever for, for, for making sure that the kids want it. But now we have full time, uh, full day kindergarten in six schools. Uh, funded four by the state, we added two more which is, these are the highest poverty schools, mm -hmm. which we are very proud of. And then the other schools, um, we, we have full day kindergarten, but it's fee-based. And then we really look at our, 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 um, our work in the schools. Uh, we moved uh, in, element, um, in one of the regions, which is um, the Chinook and the mm -hmm. Northwestern. Chinook is now 6-8, this is the first year. So there's a little more expense on that side. But 
1.8 million out of that 6 billion or so was uh, we had to pay for um, uh, this as a pension, you know, mm. contributions, which, which again, it doesn't get talked about, but it right. sort of goes back to the, you know, that pension funds, which are employer contribution to that part. Um, and then as we as we look at the the work moving forward, then of course technology is is a major thing for us. We we are trying to upgrade technology and and using some of the resources to help that. But major expense, of course, is when when salaries have been cut or maintained at the same level, you have to sort of help employees mm -hmm. with that. And then that took m most of that money. But but in reality, working with schools, we have a added AVID program. This is a advancement via uh, in individual determination. It's a national program. It basically caters to the kids who really are kind of doing well, but mm. they need some help, Higher extra cheating. help. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is in uh, three major high schools now. Right. Uh, and we provided uh, PSAT, you know, this is the national testing, mm -hmm. you know, free right. for all students. And so those kind of little things uh, have been helped. And, and then also in high school, we added more staff uh, to mentor counsel sport kids uh, to do the right things. Right. How'd the budget impact you? Uh, we received about 1.4 million <coughs> in new dollars. And as Roz me uh, mentioned, uh, 300,000 of that immediately went back into increase in pensions that were non-funded. Mm -hmm. But So um, our focus has been on uh, reducing class size where we, where we can, uh, developing our highly capable program, which needed to be upgraded and um, adding teachers for interventions, as I mentioned before. For the first time this year, we've actually are using LAP dollars, learning assistance program dollars, for mathematics at the middle level to enhance our, our middle level mm -hmm. programs in mathematics. As well, um, we're using funds for professional development for the teacher and principal uh, evaluation process that we're all working on, and for implementation of, of, of Common Core. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the funds have gone towards uh, negotiation, uh, more of on the benefit side probably than, than any other uh, piece of that. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's great to get additional dollars, but it, if you look at the real dollars today versus what we were getting six years ago, it's less. Mm -hmm. So we're just getting started. Just trying to fill the gap that right. was there. One, one other thing, if I, if I may, sure. is that we... Um, we're able to reduce uh, district-wide that we only have two combination classrooms at the elementary now. And our goal was to keep it under three. We'd like to eliminate them altogether, mm -hmm. but we're down to just two district-wide. So. And maybe next year. Yeah. Andy. Yeah, we're about the same boat. About a million dollars is what uh, was most of that money for us. So in Yelm came in uh, transportation, the help with transportation, because we put about 3,000 miles a day on our bus fleet. We're a very large rural district, as you know, compared to these guys, we probably have a little more busing than they do. And then in the maintenance and uh, operations and supplies was where we got the big chunk of that, those dollars. Um, I, I too think that it was, it was a shot in the arm. Um, but you know, I've only been a superintendent four years. And in the four years I've, uh, that I've been here, I've seen a steady decline of what the state funded down to what became more levy based mm -hmm. was happening. So, I think this year was about a 1% flip back. I think, uh, you know, if I look at six years ago, 77% of our budget was state funded. And last year was about 70%. And so this year we're about, we might hit 71%. So we're still not back to where we were. It, people talk, I, I, I really don't like the term new money. Right. Because I think it's money being given back to us that was taken away over the course of time. So, um, but I do believe that we're on the right track and, and they can do that. Again, we used our money that was there this year. We've we've always had all-day kindergarten for the last 14 years, so we funded that out of the district funds and those things. So basically, what ours was is just to kind of catch back up. As Raj implied, uh, we're spending a lot of those extra resources that we got this year uh, in technology because we do have the smarter balanced assessments coming down the road, mm -hmm. and so we've had to do a huge upgrade in our district about uh, even to try to get them out of. Um, uh, capacity to get out of the district because we're kind of landlocked with uh, a company as far as mm -hmm. what we can get bandwidth. Right. And so, uh, you know, infrastructure to have enough labs, computers, and things like that. So we're, we've gone to a Google Chromebook type thing, stations in, in many of our buildings now. And so we're spending a lot of resources on that at this point in time. So, Great. But it's all positive. Congratulations. Okay. So let's uh, keep with the money side of things. Bonds and levies coming up in February. Raj? Well, we. Uh, 
this has been a sort of regular discussion here at this table for, for us, um, 800 some more students since I joined four years ago. We are growing district. There are seven schools, I believe. We can't even put more portables because mm -hmm. of the, the cold restrictions. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we, we have to really increase our uh, classrooms. Uh, and, and one way is we are going to add one more middle school. So I look at, you know, when we say bond, I really was reflecting this morning. I said, you know, bond is a banking term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In reality, these are neighborhood schools. These are, and, and used by community. Mm -hmm. In our community, they're used extensively by the community of all sorts. So, so there, it's a more of a neighborhood investment by our community, which we need to ask them in, in February. It will be eight years since we had last time, you know, asked for, for money mm -hmm. uh, to, to support our neighborhood schools. So we will be, will be coming out and we are looking at, and the board hasn't approved, approximately $175 million. It's, of course, dependent upon their approval, and there'll be some supported by the state if that's approved. Mm -hmm. But definitely we'll be building one middle school up in the Hawks Prairie area, and then we'll be doing a major remodel, uh, Northwestern High School, which is 30-some years old uh, in anything we have done there, and just like Timberline, which was really, really old school, uh, same way. And, and, and so that one, and then Evergreen Forest Elementary School, where we have a major remodel also again in 30 some years. And, and then uh, Kamachan and others, they're bursting at seams. When, when schools are really like our elementary schools, some of them are 700, some of them beyond 700, you know, the wear and tear is much more. So, so 20 years wear and tear is like 40 years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because of the every school is like exactly. 400, 500 kids. So, so that is one of the major things we are looking at. And, and, and I hope, and I have a good sense, the community feels we are doing good and we have used the resources in the past, what, what people gave us back in 2006, very effectively, on time, within budget. And we are hopeful that they will support us again as we move forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think this, not only the 6-8, transition which we have to make in the next two, three years. We'll be transitioning anyway before even we build that middle mm -hmm. school. Uh, it's, uh, it's our collective work to do the right thing for kids. Class sizes and as we add more full day kindergarten, more spaces needed um, in, in our large district and a growing district if we continue to grow. So this is our major work as we move forward, really uh, making sure our community understands. I always say this, humbly hold us accountable for the performance for students, and we want to continue to share uh, in a very transparent way how well we are doing, okay. uh, but at the same time, support us so that understand and then, then, then see how, okay. how you can help. Right. So. so facilities bond in North Thurston coming up. Yes. Tumwater? Facilities bond in, in Tumwater. Uh, the last bond was passed, um, actually was run and passed in 2003. There had been a plan to run a bond in 2009, but the economy went south, obviously, then. So we're five years after the intended uh, bond timeline, and we have some, uh, some pretty major developing capital needs. On top of that, uh, this bond would actually replace primarily Peter G. Schmidt and Little Rock Elementary. Both uh, their main building areas were constructed in 1957, so well past due in terms of replacement for those two. Um, as I'd mentioned earlier, we're, we intend to move sixth grade to middle school, so we're going to uh, add additional wing at each one of our middle schools, plus a gymnasium that they already need, just with seventh and eighth, and additional science rooms, and uh, so major upgrades there. Um, two of our other elementaries are, are up for their 25 year or 20 plus year um, renovation in East Olympia Elementary and uh, uh, Tumwater Hill Elementary will both see some some uh, substantial improvements. Uh, Tamar High School, which is, has been renovated over the years, but is an old structure, has some, some major upgrades that we need as well. Um, and as Raj said, and, and Andy had mentioned, technology is, is an mm -hmm. ongoing need. So $10 million specifically will be set aside for technology within the, within the, the bond as, as well. Um, one other area is we want to uh, consolidate our alternative programs in one location, and so we're looking at a way to do that in a in a cost-effective way. So we're working on that as well. So if you if you add that all up, we have um, eight of our eleven uh, buildings are going to be majorly impacted by 
by the bond. So there's something for everybody in, in this, as well as technology. The bond itself is 134 million, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but we're, we've been able to work it out so our tax rate should remain flat, and we're pretty excited yeah, about good. that. So um, uh, if you take a look at where we're at, going to be at in 2013, our tax rate moving forward over the next uh, years when we fund this will actually maybe even come down a couple of pennies. So we're going to be able to do it and keep the, the tax rate flat. So we're excited Good. about that piece. Good. Great. Andy. You know, we are just doing a study and survey now to look at what, what our needs will be. Our concerns right now is, like these gentlemen have said, we have uh, five of our buildings that have 12 or more portables outside of it right now and have no more capacity. Um, we continue to grow in Yelm. Uh, we did do, a, a, you know, 10 years ago is when we built our last things. but. It's kind of tragic with the state at this point in time. You can only build as to what you have currently in place. You can't and build for the for, future. For the future. And we had a large housing developments, as you know, that yeah. are still progressing in Yelm and coming forward. So we're, we're kind of in that, uh, the baby stages of looking at that. I, I do think it's one thing to support both these gentlemen and their bonds is that as the state moves class size down, as they continue to fund smaller class size mm -hmm. for teacher ratio, that means you need more classrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're taking 24 kids and putting them in 17. So I think the communities at large need to understand that what they're asking for is this is really not unreasonable. And if we're going to really do what's best for kids, we need to support that across all right. across all our region. And people need to understand how that there's going to be some needs. But at this point in time, Yelm is, we're just kind of looking, trying to get so ourselves ready to go. you don't have a bond that's coming forward nothing, that nothing you know soon, of. No. Okay, great. Dick. Well, uh, we're fortunate our community passed a bond in 2012, and uh, we've just begun to break ground on uh, Orla, uh, the regional learning right. academy that uh, offers H Connect and Home Connect. And uh, we drove by yesterday, and they're moving dirt, and we're oh, excited about that. Uh, in February, we're looking at replacing a, a capital levy for technology, uh, which is a, a, this past uh, Levy was around ten and a half million dollars. We're anticipating it'll be somewhere close to that, uh, perhaps a little bit higher. But again, like uh, Mike has talked about, we're looking at trying to keep the, the tax rate level. It's around five dollars and thirty-seven cents per thousand right now, and we're hoping to keep it close to that level. We're excited about the groundbreaking at Orla. Uh, it's it's a great. Uh, option for families and our community and other communities and we look forward it'll be an innovative spot well and while I've got you and we mentioned this earlier I drive past Madison Elementary School every year or every day and um, about the second week of August was a little bit surprised to see them tearing the outside <laughs> off the building and I know there's been some news about what's going on there but you were really faced with a significant facilities challenge within a month of the start of school. So can you share with us how that has all rolled out? I know the progress on the building is moving forward, but you had to find a place for that entire population. We did, it was a, it was a big challenge. And uh, you know, I think sometimes our, our public agencies are viewed at, compared to private industry as not capable of executing. And uh, we gathered our team together, about 12 or 13 people, and I simply said, this is an opportunity for us. What's happened is not right, but we need to do something and we need to do it well. And it's an opportunity to show our community that we can execute as an organization. And uh, we actually did it like a bit of a huddle and put our hands together and said, let's go do it. And I'm unbelievably proud of uh, the work that we've done. We actually uh, received ovations at the public meetings with <laughs> families, and last week there were some really nice letters to the editor, and I think it's because we put kids first, and there are other pieces for sure, like responsibility, <coughs> where does insurance play out, what does this look like down the line, and what we shared with families and what we said beginning in August was the number one priority is making sure this works for students and families and I think it paid off yeah. for us. So just quickly, how did you divide that school up? I know some kids are over at Roosevelt and some are Yes, uh, grades four and five are at Roosevelt. Uh, grades K three are at the, it's the Newbridge Church. The which, old school. The old school, <laughs> yeah. incidentally. 
and our preschool is at, at Orla, or the John, John Rogers okay. School. We hope to have K3 back over winter break, hopefully 4 or 5 as well, but our, our, our focus really is mm -hmm. on the K3 right now. Well, and we're unfortunately at that point in the year yes. where any kind of construction work is challenged by the weather. And yes. so, so Can yeah. I add something mm -hmm. which I missed? I, I think when we look at our schools, uh, not only the North Thurston, Evergreen, there's a Pleasant Glade is a pretty old school. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing some work there, heavy work, uh, major work. And River Ridge High School mm -hmm. is, is pretty old, and we have we have to do some work there. Kamach and I already mentioned, and a new middle school. So along with that, I think one of the things we are we we all face in this region and nationally is the security and safety. So we'll be touching pretty much every building, mm -hmm. every neighborhood, doing something to support. Uh, so the people feel we can't make them fortress, you know, like a, you know, like jails. But but still, we need to do some sensible things, uh, where the reception areas and and all of the other safety stuff we we need to take care of. But technology, I don't want to under, you know, this, we 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 need to really invest all of us in infrastructure and and so that we can be ready for for um, Common Core and right. with testing and all right. of that stuff. So technology, right. safety, security and the basics of, of um, roofs and HVACs and all of that. So that's what part of our overall work is. Right. So. Well, we only have a few minutes left, and this is our first meeting of the year. So, uh, you know, in, in subsequent meetings, we always have special stories of things that have touched you, but this is a good time to say our goal is for this year. So I'm going to start with you, Mike. Our goal for this year is? Well, um, our goal is to continue to improve. Continuous improvement is... is uh, the, the work that we do every day. I need to say that, that our, our teachers, and not just in Tumwater, but everywhere, are working harder than they've ever worked before um, under uh, a more difficult situation in terms of accountability. Um, they need to be given some credit for that, that hard work they're doing. Our principals are actually even, their workload is even exponentially increased um, over what it used to be. So. And it all happens in the classroom, and it happens with good leadership in your building. And if you don't have good principals and good teachers, it, it, it doesn't matter. So um, our goal for the year is to con continue to get better, but make sure that we support, and everybody knows that we're in this together. Teachers, uh, principals, central office, paraeducators, all of our classified staff. I'm really proud of what we're doing in Tumwater. We have a lot of work still to do, and we just need to keep reminding ourselves that we're in this together. and um, you know, give credit where credit's due. It's, it's time that the, the state recognize that in terms of support uh, for their school systems, so. Andy. You know, I'll echo Mike's sentiment a little bit. I think that our goal this year is to continue to remove barriers that are in the way of student achievement and staff all the way across. And very fortunate to have the teachers we have. Things that we're doing out there have been very positive. I showed a slide at the very beginning when I spoke to all staff, it was a boat and uh, one end of it was sinking, and there was two people on that end bailing, and the other people at the other end were saying, I'm sure glad I'm not at that end of the boat. <laughs> I think our staff realizes that this is our boat. We're this all is in the boat. Yeah, we're yeah. all in it together, and I, and I really appreciate what's happening out there. So our goal is continuous improvement, continue to grow, and, and clear the way, clear the path, so teachers can be effective and students can have you know, a significant impact. Great. Dick. Uh, <clears throat> I would just be restating what uh, Mike and Andy have, have shared. I would only add that uh, on a personal level, uh, last week I was in work, and I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing. It's an honor and a privilege uh, to lead our school district. And I was just smiling and laughing at work and saying, what a great opportunity it is to be able to work and lead with professionals and be a part of, of really changing the lives of children and changing our community for a very positive, very positive way. Okay. And I'll, I'll really say this, I, I don't think we can say it enough as, as has been said before. It's not only the, the staff in the classrooms, but everyone working for the school system. And especially in the last four years I've seen where the budgets have been down and we have been really struggling and the salaries have not been there, they have done an amazing job. And we want to say thank you to all of them. But I, I also want to say that the systems approach, staying focused on every child and doing everything we can to help them and take it deep down in our hearts, but also do certain things 
which we need to expect from each other. So it's, it's, it's that kind of, when I see that kind of acceptance at every level, and it shows in the results, it is inspirational. And Dick has said this, I don't think there is any other job, this is the noblest profession in the world, uh, in, in being in, with kids and helping them grow. And I believe we are at a great place and as, as the state looks at the future and we collectively look at the future, our community should be very proud of the work uh, our staff is doing and our community should be, you know, we all should be thanking the staff to doing such a great job. Okay. So thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for taking time from your schedules to join us uh, at the first roundtable of this school year and looking forward to our future conversation. So thank you for being with us. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Remember, if you are the parent of a preschool child, read with your child 20 minutes a day. It's one of the best things you can do to get them ready for their education. And while you're at it, throw in some simple counting games and get them curious about numbers <laughs> and math. If you're the parent of a school-aged child, get involved with your school. There's many ways you can help to promote education and, and your school's success in our community. Go to your school's website or call the principal or talk to the teacher to find out about volunteer opportunities and how you can be intimately and closely involved in your child's education. And support your schools. Uh, we have great schools here in Thurston County. They are the foundation of our community. So remember that when you drive by a school and see kids on the street. Thanks for joining us here at the, thir at the Superintendent's Roundtable. I'm Deborah Vinsel. We'll see you again after the winter holidays.